Hi, it's Dr. D. And in this video, I'm going to share with you how you can have deeper, more meaningful conversations with your partner or spouse. I think this is one of the biggest things that I talk about when I work with couples and even individuals because they're really seeking a way in which to share conversations or have conversations with their partner in ways that are meaningful and that are impactful. And so I describe these conversations as exploratory conversations. And what I mean by exploratory conversations is that sometimes there's topics that we all have to discuss that are not kind of one and done. Now we all know those one and done conversations, right? We can kind of talk about it real quickly, can be over and done with, we've, we've discussed and we can move on. But there's so many things in life that come up that we want to be able to, you know, reach our partner and hear what he or she has to say and seek to understand and listen and be curious and to get to a place that we that both people feel really good about. And so what I talk about in therapy is ways in which each person can be heard and they can express what their needs are and then they kind of negotiate the differences. That's one way to have an exploratory conversation. But the other thing about these types of conversations is that they help couples to not only look at the long game, like the long-term goals, but also the short-term goals and how they're going to reach those things. So for example, some couples can agree on long-term goals of say financial planning or children or anything. It could really be anything, but where they kind of get messed up a little bit or that they stumble, I should say, might be a better word, is the short-term steps to actually get there. And so they can agree on that long-term picture and that long-term goal, but how they're actually going to get there and achieve that goal sometimes is where the differences start to rise and that those are the differences that they possibly argue about. So maybe they want children, but they're not really sure they agree on the children, but maybe they don't agree on the timeline or where they're gonna live or how they're gonna manage that or who's gonna stay at home and how they're gonna financially you know, take care of that child or you know, how much is a person gonna work or do they get paternity or maternity leave, those are all the different variables that make up that long-term decision of having a child. I could even take the example of saving for the future. And yeah, sure, people want a retirement. They want a 401k. They want to have money. Maybe they want to purchase a house. They agree on that. But then oftentimes they don't agree on those small steps to get there. How are they going to buy the house? Who's going to contribute? How much is each person going to contribute? What is the, the goal and where you want to live? Do you want to live, if you live in the city, do you want to live in the suburbs? Do you want to live closer to family? These are all the smaller little bite-sized conversations or exploratory conversations as they explore with one another how each person feels about these long-term goals. And so that's really where those deeper conversations come in. And what we talk about in therapy is how I can help those couples achieve that. For example, lots of things that I often talk about here in these videos and my blogs or even with couples or people or anybody in general is you know creating that safe space where you can talk with one another about that. that really is key. That safe space where each person can share their opinions and their thoughts, feelings, and behaviors about whatever it is that topic is that they're discussing. And then the other part, the other key component of that is really finding the time to create that conversation. So it's not just a safe space, but it's also when are you going to talk about that and where. And often I bring up this soft startup or, you know, um, talking about a time during the day or during the week that's really going to be best and conducive to both people. So it's not the type of conversation you can kind of pass in the hallway and start talking about children or financial stuff. It's really about this is a really important conversation for both of us to have. These are conversations that are going to ultimately lead us to some type of final decision down the road and when is a really good time to have that so you have the safe space you have the startup you have the chiseled out time that's just for the couple and then of course part of that conversation is what will you be discussing and how will you manage your emotions because when we talk about things that we're very passionate about or that that is a very um, significant or strong value in our life emotions are going to come up and so maybe someone says well i really let's go back to the children maybe i want to wait for a while maybe the other person doesn't want to wait how do you manage those how do you talk about that how do you manage your feelings around that and so it's not just the, the tangible things of the time and the place and the safe space, but also managing your emotions around that and deciding ahead of time, you know, what's the time limit on it? Do we have like an hour we want to talk about it? We want to talk about it for a half an hour. Do we want to chip away at this conversation? Do we want to limit 
what we talk about. For example, going back to say children again, do we wanna just limit about if we are gonna have children and then maybe where we're going to live and then we just take those two details of the bigger picture and we just talk about those. Or do you find that maybe you can talk about more things? It just really depends on each couple. Some couples can just have a, uh, several open-ended conversations where they keep discussing things until they get to an end point of making a final decision. Other couples cannot do that. It really depends on the distress level of the couple or how easy it is for couples to talk about these things. That every couple is different. And so it doesn't mean that one is better than the other just means that you have to figure out what's going to work for both you and your partner and so there's the macro decision of where we're going to live are we going to have children financial decisions um you know it really could be anything you know time away you know time separated time apart you know what our lifestyle is going to look like it could be any of those macro topics in those situations and then the micro conversations are those small ones that lead up to the final decision and so when i'm sharing with clients around you know talking about exploratory we're really just like i said we're just exploring how each person feels and thinks about any given situation. There's the time to talk about it, there's a space to talk about it, and that both people will show up with emotional bandwidth to manage their emotions through this. And then of course, if you, you know, you get people get distressed or they get really agitated or irritated or frustrated, then you plan ahead that you're gonna take a time out and come back or maybe you're going to visit another part of that broader conversation as a way to keep chipping away at it. But at the end, you know, I found that one and done conversations with some of the more complicated subjects in life, you know, really take more than one conversation. If you go in with the attitude and the knowledge that it's probably going to take a few conversations to get through this discussion about whatever it is, then people go in there with that mindset and so they don't always push for a final decision. And I feel that it's really important for both people to be on the same page because as we get older, you know, and we decide to add little people to our lives or do anything plan for the future, life can become more complicated, which even represents even more significance what I'm trying to say of the importance of having these small micro conversations that eventually lead to the, the big macro conversation that eventually leads to making a final decision on whatever it is that you want to achieve, what you want to talk about. And so I hope that helps. I find that when I work with couples, they really start to use that language in every day. Like we should have an exploratory conversation and I really wanna get better at that. And what are the rules around having those types of conversations? Because couples really wanna find an answer to all these different things and they wanna be able to create the space and create the place where they both can talk about that openly so they both feel connected and they're together and they're this we attitude and they're gonna find a way through all those small conversations to come up with end game and an end result and a final decision. And I hope that helps. Thanks.